the life, ain't it, boys? Big mountains, sweet grass, blue sky going on forever. Who could ask for anything more? How long you figured we're gonna have to be out here? Oh, I get it. Man's barely been married a month and already misses his new bride. Well, go on. Go on back to Esther. Me and Rich will bring in these beeves. Hey, hang on. How do you know I don't want to get back to Gloria? Oh, come on, Hobson. I mean, I can understand the newlywed, but what's your excuse? I happen to enjoy my wife's company. Not to mention the quiet pleasures of domestic bliss. Mm -hmm. In Nelson's house? Well, go ahead, laugh. But Mary and Esther's the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. Oh, come on, Pan, admit it. Wouldn't you enjoy Olivia's company on an evening? Mm. Oh, an evening's fine. It's the rest of my life that I find chilling. Hello, the camp. Hello? That you, Rich Hobson? Step out and show yourself. Corporal Stewart. Run for it. Hold her right there. Go oh, on me. Hey, what the hell are you, did you do? Hold that or I'll fire. <laughs> A warrant for your arrest as a criminal fugitive wanted for murder. Richmond P. Hobson, Jr., Panhandle Phillips, and Gloria McIntosh Hobson were real people. And for a short period of time, in the wilderness halfway between Vancouver and the Yukon, they worked to carve out the largest cattle ranch in the world. That part is true. Destruction of justice and assault on a peace officer. Well, he didn't mean it. He tripped. The hell I did. Let it be, Pam. I've been waiting six years for this to happen. Don't you have anything better to do? I mean, aren't there some real criminals hanging about? I'm not looking for trouble here. I'm just doing my job. Yeah, you just happen to be in the neighborhood. I got a fugitive warrant on this man from Arkansas. I'm obliged to pick him up and take him over to Vanderhoof for an extradition hearing. Well, you know, Vanderhoof's four or five days away. One Mountie, guarding the prisoner all that time. I pretend I didn't hear that. It's all right, Pam. I don't want anyone getting into trouble on my account. All right, we'll meet you in Vanderhoof. We'll get you a lawyer. A lawyer? That's about as useful as a pitchfork in a snowstorm. Just tell Esther I love her. We'll bring her along, straighten this mess out. Does it not strike you as curious that Stuart found McDaniels all the way up here? You mean because McDaniels has successfully avoided the law for the past six years? Yeah, something like that. I blame it on marriage. Oh, of course you do. All that domestic bliss you two talk so highly of dulls a man's natural instincts for survival. And since you so recently went on record as enjoying the conversation of women, then I will leave it to you to tell Esther what happened. What are you going to do? It's a pressing question here that needs answering. How long is that going to take? What are you, keeping a logbook? No, no. Rich, why didn't you stop him? Because he had a warrant, that's why. So what happens now? Well, they have to have an extradition hearing before they can take him back down south. Oh, no. We can't let them do that. No, that's right. So we're going to go into town and we're going to get a lawyer. Hey, you take Esther. I'll get Nelson and meet you there. We can't afford a lawyer. Don't worry about that. I don't believe it. Why not? I mean, you've heard the stories about McDaniels. But stories are stories. I know McDaniels, and he wouldn't kill someone in cold blood. Who else you know carries a gun? Have you ever seen him use it? He never even raises his voice. Well, you can't judge a person by appearances. I grew up with a lot of mean people, and they were nothing like him. 
And what if Big Daniel's gentle mask is just a mask? What if underneath there's a, a raging volcano? If Robert McDaniels is a volcano, and you're Jack Dempsey. It's just under the right circumstances, maybe anyone is capable of murder. If McDaniels killed someone, he had to have had an awful good reason. Well, they say that he had this girl that he was sweet on. And there was this other guy, and he... He... Well, he tried to force himself on her. He what? You know, force himself on her. And McDaniels caught him? She was crying and trying to get the guy to stop, but he wouldn't. McDaniels dragged the guy off of her. And the guy pulled the knife, McDaniels turned it on him, and he stabbed him dead. <clears throat> well, that's what they say. seeing you. Did they give you any indication as to what's going to happen? The judge will be coming in from Prince George for the extradition hearing as soon as the district attorney arrives from Beaumont County. All the way up from Arkansas for your hearing? Seems to have taken a mighty personal interest. We're going to help you fight this, Robert. All right, I'm going to have to ask you folks to leave. Try not to worry. I'll be back as soon as I can. Well, Rich, can I have a word? All right. Two minutes. Why is it wrong? I had six years of freedom. Then I have my time with Esther. More than I ever expected. Robert, it's for the best. I can't run anymore. You can't just give up. I mean, I want you to tell her to forget about me. Just get on with her life. Because if I go to Arkansas, I won't be coming back. It can't be that cut and dried. I'm afraid it is. I know you want to help your friend, but this is an extradition hearing, not a trial to prove his guilt or innocence. Well, I thought that was the whole point. Oh. Hearings only determine whether McDaniels is charged with a crime that is also a crime in Canada, which it is. Homicide is homicide. If he's innocent, then... That'll be decided by a trial in Arkansas. McDaniels is right. He's going south. I guess they teach those boys something in Regina besides grooming horses. Pardon? About the law. Good Corporal's absolutely correct from his limited point of view, but there are grounds to argue against extradition. That's so. What would those be? One. Mistaken identity. Arrested man is not the accused. Two, the proceedings are being used to punish the accused for a crime of a political nature. And three, the extradition was instituted to serve the private ends of the prosecutor. Is that all? Only three. Mind you, that is considerably better than the big fat zero Corporal Stewart offered you. How do you know all this? Uh, <clears throat> Ira Walsh, barrister and solicitor. Richmond Hobson. Barman? Now I stand before a different bar. Rich? Uh, well, I don't see how... No, all you can do... 
I don't see how... Look, all you can do is meticulously review all aspects of the case and see if there isn't any way one of these grounds might apply to the fugitive. They all seem like long shots to me. Well, I could handle it for you. Ten dollars an hour? I'll call my father in the morning. He knows the best lawyers in Vancouver. We can't afford a Vancouver lawyer. We can't even afford his train fare. Well, then he'll recommend someone up here. I'll find a way. Maybe he can recommend someone who'll waive his fee. Maybe there's some lawyer willing to do that for you, but not for us. No one around here is going to do us any favors. And it'll be even worse for Robert in Arkansas. Robert isn't guilty. He isn't white. Once they get him back down there, it's hopeless. What are we going to do? Well, I've been getting advice from Ira Walsh. Who? They're about to take Robert McDaniels back to Arkansas and hang him, and you're getting advice from that... that drunk? Object. Gloria, that's no drunk. That's our lawyer. I spoke to Bob Frazier, and Ira Walsh used to be considered the best lawyer in these parts. Used to be. Now, granted, he seems to have developed an over-fondness for alcohol. Why would you even consider him? Well, he's smart, and we can afford him. I'll call my father in the morning. I'm sure he'll be able to recommend someone. Gloria, no Vancouver hotshot lawyer is going to drop everything and make it up here in 36 hours. What do you mean? The extradition hearing's been set for the day after tomorrow. The judge is already on his way. The day after tomorrow? Yeah. So it seems our Mr. Walsh now has three things to recommend him. He's smart, he's cheap, and he's here. Well, let's get started. Shouldn't we go to your office? This is it. Ooh, misunderstanding with the landlord. It's... Where do you keep your law books? Uh, pawn shop. How do you look up cases? Hey, all the really important precedents are right here. Innkeeper, salt for my wounds. Bar doesn't open till 11. 10.30. Revised Statutes of British Columbia, Liquor Control Act, 1936, Consolidation, Chapter 160. Bob. Look, there's one thing you should know if you're going to take the case. Oh, I'm taking it. You're going to have to work for free. I can't work for free. I'm a lawyer. All respect, sir. You're a drunk. You don't have an office or a library. You're lucky I'm not asking you to pay us. Yeah, but I'll have expenses. Perhaps we could compromise with a modest reduced fee of $100. I'll see what I can raise, but no promises. A uh, token retainer, perhaps 20? Out of the question. A cup of coffee and a shot of Jameson's? All right, one. Get Bob to put it on my tab. <clears throat> Good man. Oh, and uh, uh, once more, naming my client. McDaniels. Robert McDaniels. This is leaving. My wife, Gloria. Oh, uh, a pleasure. I, uh... <clears throat> I interviewed Mr. McDaniels. How was he? Not in good spirits, I'm afraid. Uh, didn't even want to talk to me until I assured him he would not be out of pocket for my legal fees. Oh, he doesn't have to worry about that. No, apparently not. You know that he's innocent. It was self-defense. That is a matter for the courts in Arkansas to decide. He'll never see a court in Arkansas. It was a white man who died. As I explained to your husband, extradition treaties presuppose that uh, due process will take place in both countries. You don't really think he's going to get a fair trial down there, do you? As an officer of the court, I have to believe in the rule of law. Then how do we stop the extradition? When talking to your friend, uh... Robert McDaniels. An 
idea did present itself. Did you bring the wife? Uh, yeah. Esther's here with her sister, Rita George. In the Indian room. Uh, <clears throat> Esther? Yes? Ira Walsh, your husband's attorney. Oh, how do you do? What is your husband's name? Robert McDaniel. So, your married name... This is stupid. I smell liquor on his breath. It's after shave. Uh, uh, you, you, you can't go back there. You, this is not... It's okay, Jimmy. This is where trouble starts. So, your married name is... Esther McDaniels. Mrs. Robert. Daniels. That's right. And your new brother-in-law. What's his name? Robert McDaniels. Are these trick questions? Beaumont County in the state of Arkansas wants to extradite a person named Daniel Roberts. Yes, that's because no, Robert... No, 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 no. My client introduced himself to me as Robert McDaniels. He is known by everyone, including his wife, as Robert McDaniels. As far as I'm concerned, that's his name until someone can prove otherwise. Do you really think that's gonna fly? Well, there's no picture with the arrest warrant, only a description, which could fit thousands of colored men. They needed to make an arrest. Your husband was handy. As far as I'm concerned, it's a clear case of mistaken identity. How's things doing in town? Hearings tomorrow. Robert asked Esther not to come see him anymore. Said it'd be best if she considered him dead. Holding up well, is he? Why don't you get tied up with the law? Any chance Rupert might have known we was up in the Archies chasing strays? Sure, I was over to his place trading for some salt pork, and he asked if Robert and I could put up a new barn for him. Uh-huh. I said he'd have to wait till Robert was done with you two. Uh-huh. You're not thinking. Robert never did anything bad to Rupert. Rupert's a neighbor. Some of the people, you can't trust any of the time. You can certainly trust me. No need to. It says right there, C-O-D. You bring me the cash, I will deliver you the parcel. Is there a problem, Rupert? Ah. Someone in this land of Philistines who will empathize. I had the opportunity to acquire a precious addition to my library. Very rare, limited edition. Fifty drawings and fifty more drawings. Impeccable original editions of the collected work of Aubrey Beardsley. You are familiar with Beardsley? The um, provocative imagery, the sensuality of his line. 47 pounds? I had these jewels of illustrative art expressed to me, and now they are held ransom by that... that troglodyte. If you didn't have this kind of money, why did you order the box? I don't have the money tomorrow. But it's the principle. Spending another night without those books because of that literalist... I don't want to tell you your trade, but mistaken identity? Everyone knows that McDaniels was Robert's ally. I have heard him referred to by no other name. Yeah, it seems kind of flimsy to me. Well, as you said, lawyering's my trade. Speaking of which, how about another deposit on my retainer? How about you give the booze a bit of a rest until after the hearing, say? Just one. James. Yes. Ira Walsh. I'll be acting for Mr. McDaniels tomorrow. Oh, Mr. Walsh. I wasn't aware that you were still practicing. Oh, yes. I'm gonna practice till I get it right. Uh, <laughs> may I uh, introduce Mr. Chance Lafollette, the Ooh. prosecuting attorney from Beaumont County. Chance Lafollette, the Ooh. prosecuting attorney from Beaumont County, Arkansas. Pleasure, sir. 
And this is Richmond Hobson, a friend of the defendant. You have very famous names, sir. I don't know if you're aware. Richmond Pearson Hobson, Congressional Medal of Honor winner, congressman from Alabama. Yes, he was my father. What a surprise to meet the son of one of Alabama's finest way up here in Canada's Northland. I bet you have some stories to tell. Oh. Uh, may I offer you gentlemen a nightcap? No, uh, no, no. I mean, I, you were more than generous on the train. I, I think I'll just call it a night. Yeah, I think we'd best be hitting hay as well. Oh, I wouldn't mind a drink. Got a big day tomorrow. Just one. <laughs> we'll see you in the morning. Carlson? <clears throat> Can you handle it? Who? Boss. He's smart enough, knows the law. He said he was only going to stay for one drink. Go down and check. I can't go down and check. He's speaking with the Arkansas prosecutor. Sneak a look. I can't sneak a look. Sure you can. I'm sure he went home hours ago. Home? I well, slept under a bar stool. <sighs> if you don't go now, you'll wake me up when you finally decide to get out of bed. I was wondering where you got to. Oh, I pulled in this afternoon. I was swapping stories at Nelson's camp. So you know that the hearing's tomorrow. Yeah. I also know who hung McDaniels out to dry. Who? I tracked the Mounties' horse back to the pig farmer's place. Rupert knew we were up in the hills together. I don't know. That's pretty thin. Well, not when you combine it with the knowledge of Rupert's weasel and backstabbing nature. Well, even if you're right, that doesn't get Robert out of jail. You're right. We're going to have to bust him out. Man, this isn't the Wild West. But... Justice demands that, in the process, we take a moment and shoot Rupert. I hired a lawyer to fight the extradition. A lawyer? Is that the best you could do? Yeah. Ira Walsh. I heard he took to drinking. He sobered up for the event. Unacquainted as I am with your local legal customs, I beg your indulgence for any missteps I might make during the proceedings. Absolutely. You are too kind. Mm. Well, I guess I should get to bed. See you tomorrow. Ira Walsh, I'd like you to meet my partner, Van Handel Phillips. Walsh, I sure hope you got the angles figured. <laughs> Great state of Arkansas, that thank you. Rupert. Mr. LaFollette. I am. Good morning. I am. Um, good. I really must be going. So soon? Very. Coffee? Please. If I'm not keeping you from anything. Oh, it's not every morning I get to start my day in the presence of such a lovely young woman. <laughs> I was wondering if I might ask you a favor. Oh, well, in the South, the age of chivalry is not dead. Perhaps you could be tempted to prolong your stay? Oh, sweet temptations. <sighs> what did you have in mind? Would it be too presumptuous of me to hope that you might entertain the thought of a continuance? <sighs> you modern girls, you are not content to be just another pretty face. You have to know the law as well. Up here, a girl has to be ready to look out for herself. Now, why would you want a continuance? I'm worried about Mr. Walsh's health. I wouldn't worry over much about that. I'm sure you'd hate for Mr. McDaniels to be denied proper representation. He's fortunate to have representation by counsel at all, and I'm afraid I have a duty to the good people of Beaumont County. Just until we can get another lawyer? I'm an elected official, and my 
constituents just might get it into their head. I'm asking them to pay for an extended Canadian vacation. Don't you worry. I'm sure your Mr. Walsh is up to the task at hand. Wake up, Ira. I'm awake, I'm awake. Here. It'll be fine once we get some coffee into him. <clears throat> oh, geez, geez, that's hot. Why don't you just pour it over his head? Drink it. You gotta get in shape to fight this case. Yeah, but it's not gonna make any difference. Drunk or sober, even Clarence Darrow couldn't win this one. McDaniels is an innocent man, and you're just gonna give up on him? I'm facing reality. If a cause is already lost... It doesn't mean it's not worth fighting for. Perhaps I'll go uh, soak my head. It's not too late. We can spring McDaniels when the Mountie brings him over from the jail. I can't do that. Okay, we can do it afterwards. So I would ask you on behalf of the state of Arkansas to grant this writ and extradite Daniel Roberts without delay. Lord, with all due respect, my learned friend has not produced one shred of evidence that the defendant is the person named in this warrant. Continue, Mr. Walsh. Well, I am prepared to introduce a string of witnesses who know, who have known my client as Robert McDaniels, not Daniel Roberts. What a surprise. Your Honor, must we listen to this nonsense? Thank you, Mr. Lafollette. But I will decide what nonsense I will listen to in my court. Yeah. And the proper form of address is my lord. I'd like to call my first witness. My lord. I believe we can save ourselves a lot of time if Mr. Walsh would call the fugitive to the stand. Excuse me, my lord, but my learned colleague should concern himself with his own witnesses. If he has something to hide... My lord, I have Jack. Ask me anything and I'll tell you the truth. I shouldn't be hung for what I've done. My lord. Uh, now, this is not the only case on my calendar, Mr. Walsh. Nor would I look favorably on continuing to enjoy the hospitality of Vanderhoof after the nine o'clock train departs. <laughs> I solemnly promise, affirm, and declare that the evidence given by me to the court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please state your full name. Daniel Jacob Roberts. Was there anything else, Mr. Walsh? My lord. Begging the court's indulgence, I'd ask for a brief recess. Mr. Walsh, you are trying my patience. Begging your pardon, my lord. Ah, uh, ten minutes. After which I will not stand for any more stunts or cheap theatrics. I meant what I said about the nine o'clock train. Well, now what? Well, I have to make the case that... Uh... Murder charge is an attempt to punish McDaniels for a crime of a political nature. But you said that wouldn't work. That's when I thought we had something else. Where are you going? Before I have to make that argument, I need to throw up. I continue to be astounded by your faith in the law. Don't be ridiculous. This is, this is U.S. currency. Yeah, and this is Canada. Now. I'll do you a favor and take your funny money, but I'm sure not paying a premium. You must be joking. The exchange rate is at least a dollar ten. Maybe so. I'm not the bank. Now, where would that pork chopper lay his hands on U.S. dollars? The flat. The envelope. The reward on McDaniels. Boy, that greedy lump of fat back. I'll boil him in his own grease. Hey, Matt, I just want my books. On my books. You're welcome to them. But Tewksbury and I have an arrangement. I don't deal in foreign exchange. 
and he doesn't sell drinks. Why would the state of Arkansas pay a reward in cash? Pam, can you make sure that money doesn't wander off? Oh, yeah. Gloria, I need you to help me make a phone call. 90, 100, 111 with the exchange. Rupert? All right. My books, if you please. I believe I'll be holding on to that. Phillips, you ruffian that. Evidence. What? And I'll be needing all of it. Be you. Be you. Be you. Lord, you cannot grant this order. Daniel Roberts cannot expect to receive a fair trial in Arkansas. It is the home of the reprehensible Jim Crow laws. Daniel Roberts is, in fact, a political refugee. I object. It, it's entirely likely he'll be lynched before he even gets to trial. Operator? Yes. I need you to connect me to Washington, D.C. Senator Darren's office, Capitol Hill. You said, why would they pay a reward in cash? What if Lafollette paid it himself and not the state? What? Pretend you're my secretary. Hello? Yes, Senator Darren's office. I have Richmond P. Hobson Jr. on the line for the senator. No, I can't leave a number. I'm sure if you mention Mr. Hobson's name to the senator, he'll get unbusy. I am deeply offended by counsel's unfounded and negative opinion of the state of Arkansas. As a representative of the judicial system of Beaumont County, and as a gentleman, I give this court my personal guarantee standards of American justice will be fully and fairly applied to Robert McDaniels. That's right, Senator. Yeah, halfway to the Yukon. Oh, you wouldn't believe how cold. <laughs> yeah, last winter was so cold, why, our words froze solid as soon as they left our mouths. <laughs> yeah, my wife and I had to wait for spring thaw to figure out what we were arguing about. <laughs> well, yeah, Mother's doing fine, fine. Oh, the bird hunting is superb. Yeah, how's Mrs. Darren? Yeah. Yeah. Well, just a, a question, really. You ever hear of a county prosecutor by the name of Chance LaFollette out of Beaumont, Arkansas? Even in this tiny and isolated community, I see evidence of prejudice and discrimination. Jackson Millard Vanderhoof's not the issue here. And I'm sure my colleague, being of the Hebrew persuasion, I suffered the effects of bigotry and intolerance. Yeah. Would he claim that he would not be fairly treated by the courts of this country? Lord, please. Mr. Walsh. Moment's indulgence, my lord, since my learned friend has introduced my personal circumstances into this court. Your Honor. Well, I'm afraid you did open the door, counsel. And the proper form of address in this court is still my lord. My lord. Yes, I have experienced bigotry and intolerance in this country. Perhaps you recall the St. Louis, an ocean liner carrying 907 German Jews. It was refused entry into Canada and the United States just months before the war broke out. Four of those passengers were relatives of mine. All 907 passengers were forced to return to Germany, where none of them has been heard from since. <clears throat> as regrettable as this incident may have been, Mr. Walsh, I, I fail to see... Now. I'm sure Mr. LaFollette would have argued that the rule of law existed in Germany, but it did not for those 907. Now, I couldn't save my relatives, but I have an opportunity to save Robert McDaniels. And so, my lord, do you. The opportunity and the power. My lord... I sympathize with my young colleague, I do. But I would humbly submit that saving the world is beyond the competence of this court. Would you now, Mr. LaFollette? You would be surprised at the competence of His Majesty's court. No, I meant no disrespect, my lord. I'm sure you didn't. Yeah, Father always said you knew everyone worth knowing south of the Mason-Dixon. Really? Unfortunately, Mr. Walsh, I must agree with Mr. LaFollette on the law. I see no reason to deny his writ. 
Order. 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 Order, please. Order. This isn't a bar room yet. Sorry, my lord. Uh, if we could just have a word with Mr. Walsh, my lord. All right. Uh, <clears throat> it has come to my attention that Chance LaFollette is running for election to the United States Congress. Before he left Beaumont County, he boasted he'd track down the, quote, fugitive Negro killer Daniel Roberts and bring him home to face the music, unquote. To get elected, Mr. LaFollette needs to bring Roberts back. <laughs> My lord. Please, must we listen to this flight of fancy? We would argue that Mr. La Follette has instituted these extradition proceedings for his private ends. This is grounds for denying the writ. Re Rosenbaum, 1874, Re McTeer, 1910, Re Gifford, 1929, and Looseberg versus Sagan, 1934. Precisely, Mr. Walsh. I'm familiar with the case law. And we have evidence that Mr. LaFollette put up the reward himself. Oh, now, my lord. In cash. Hello, Rupert. No, I, I, order, order, order. Mr. LaFollette, are you running for Congress? I surely don't believe that I would sink so low. Are you? To serve one's country is the highest calling a man can answer on this earth. Ah, and patriotism is the last refuge of a scoundrel. Samuel Johnson. Mr. LaFollette, your writ of extradition is denied. Mr. Roberts, you're free to go. <laughs> I have to bust McDaniels out of jail. He's a free man. But we can still shoot Rupert. Excuse me. Mr. Moen, I want to thank you for your assistance. I felt Walsh's arguments offered more passion than substance. Boy's a damn fine Jew lawyer. The law often allows what honor forbids. Never you mind, Mr. Moore. You can't let a nigger get away with murder. An invitation to anarchy. Good day. Phillips, do you know who McDaniels is? McDaniels is free to be wherever he wants to be. Thanks to you. I was merely doing my duty as a law-abiding citizen. Well, why don't you take your law-abiding backside out of here before I slice it for bacon? I'm trying to tell out. you, McDaniels. Out! Is in out! Hey. You pusillanimous Benedict Arnold! And if I catch you back here again, it better be with an apple in your mouth. Ira, we can't really repay you for saving our brother-in-law here. Uh, Rich forewarned me. But uh, me and Robert took his bear last fall. And Rita and Esther cured and tanned it. And we want you to have it. No, 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 I, uh... <laughs> no, I, uh, I couldn't. <laughs> we were using it on our bed. But they don't need anything to keep them warm. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. This is, uh, this is most generous. You're the one who should be thanked. Me? Well, for sticking by me, I didn't exactly inspire confidence. Oh, I can't say I didn't have my doubts. Yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Hey, you better grab this, Wolf. It's the only thing you'll see by way of a fee. Go on, take it. It's good money, U.S. dollars. Uh, thanks. Uh, I've already been compensated. What am I gonna do with this? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you two take our hotel room tonight? Well, you've done enough, Gloria. We're fine out here. Please. Something happens to Rich when we camp out under the stars. They don't let Indians in the hotel. Except they don't let Indians in the hotel. Except when they put us on trial. If Fraser tries to stop you, send him to me. 
been a long time since I slept in a real bed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go grab my things. <laughs> See, I told you Walsh could pull it off. It wasn't Walsh, it was you. Knowing exactly what strings to pull. Well, it helps having my father's connections. You're a good man. McDaniels would have done the same for me. Mrs. Hobson. Mrs. Hobson. Lev Follett has a gun. Look, I am certain that he's going to go after McDaniels. I tried to tell Phillips. Wait, wait, wait. A gun? Yes. Where's Lev Follett now? I don't know. He left the hotel some time ago. Okay. Go to the Georgia's camp and tell Esther and McDaniels to stay put. And tell Penn to meet me at the livery stables. Did you tell the Mountie? Oh, I know. I... Well, then go. It wasn't personal with McDaniels. I, I felt it was my duty to stand by the law. Rupert, go. A word, Robert. If I may. We have nothing to say to one another. What do you want? You tell your wife to go on ahead. Go on over to the hotel. I'll be right there. And Robert, no. I'm fine. Go. Now we just wait for the train to pull into the station. We might attract too much attention standing together on the platform. Judges on that train. I guess you won't be going to the club car. You plan on taking me all the way back to Arkansas at gunpoint? Once we're south of the border, I'll have more assistance. I'm not going with you. I promised the people of Beaumont County I'd bring you back, and I intend to do so. And if I refuse? Then I'll shoot you where you stand. We're not in Beaumont County yet. You'll never get away with shooting me here. Well, if I do, what if I don't? You'll still be dead. Goodbye, Mr. Lapalette. Boy, you come back here. You listen to me. Well, this saves the price of a hanging. A lawyer with a gun. That's a deadly combination. You all right, Robert? Yes. Robert! <laughs> Mr. LaFollette seems to think that we live in the Wild West. These men assaulted me, all three of them. I was merely defending myself. It's okay. I tried to shoot Robert in the back. All right. You got two choices. You get on that train and never come across the line again. Stay and I'll arrest you for attempted murder. I believe I'll, I'll catch that train. I'll see that you do. You know what? We won't even try to extradite you. <laughs> Seems I have to thank you again. You still got that room key? <laughs> well, good night. Corporal Stewart wasn't at the detachment, so I went to his home, and his wife all said right, that he'd already left. It's all taken care of. Thank you. Despite what you may think, I do not approve of vigilante tactics. Rupert, I'm going to try to forget your behavior of the last several days. Not forgive, mind you, just forget. I feel there is no reason. And to help me forget, I am going to take this here 30 pieces of silver and make it a belated wedding gift to Esther and McDaniels. What do you say? I, uh. Atta boy, Rupert. <laughs> I hope they'll be very happy. A distinct feeling of deja vu. Welcome to the world of mystery, mayhem, and murder. Angela Lansbury is out to discover the shocking truth. Murder, she wrote, next on Vision TV.